Talking right now, two-tier justice returns to the UK. A black law student who hurled vile abuse at the Arsenal and England star Bakoya Saka has avoided jail because, wait for it, he insisted that he wasn't racist. So this is a bloke called Suhal Ali, and he posted an audio message on social media calling Saka a, quote, effing black piece of S and a effing monkey. This guy is not stupid. He's a 20-year-old second law student at City University, and he also used the N-word. He admitted all of this, by the way. He admitted all of this at Westminster Magistrates Court, but received a 12-month conditional discharge because the magistrate's chair, Karen O'Donnell, told Ali, your lawyer said your intention was not to be racist, but whoever heard it would have heard racial abuse. But you're of previous good character and you have no previous convictions. You're remorseful. Now, that might be okay if that was the policy taken for everyone in the UK, everyone who is accused of sending racist Tweets. But do you think that is the case? Absolutely not. As Alex Armstrong pointed out, two tier justice strikes again. Tier one, a black student, and he goes on uh, into what Ali said. Tier two, in 2022, Justin Price was jailed for six weeks for posting similar slurs. And the CPS, which boasted about it at the time, said Price targeted a footballer based on the colour of his skin and his action was clearly racist and a hate crime. Those who racially abuse footballers ruin the game for all. I hope this case sends out the message that we will not tolerate racism and offenders will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. What's changed? I can harbour a guess. And so can we just be honest about this? What has changed is that the second man who was sending the obviously racist tweets was black himself and so was able to make an argument that he wasn't racist. Definitely. I, I, I think I've been saying this for quite some time. I, I think if you're a white person in this country, um, in particular male, and I think even beyond the racism, racism this uh, specific matter, I think if you're a white male in this country over the age of 40, 50, I think your vocabulary in this country is so small. The things you can say and the, the things you can do are so, so little compared to everyone else. This is... I, I, this is a great example. It's great in some ways because it highlights what we, I think most people already know, the two-tier policing system. But I think it goes a lot deeper than that. And I think there is a serious problem in this country where we're seeing different standards being applied to different races. You know, that that example there where they used the, um, the intention wasn't there from the person to give racial abuse. But normally when it comes to something like this, regardless of the intention is how the person perceives that abuse is what you would do. And most people who would see the, the messages that he sent would say they're racist messages, regardless of his intent or not. Um, so I think it's it's really highlighting the, the complete um, the complete contrast in what people can say in this country. We are so obsessed with talking about race. We're so obsessed about constantly talking about black, brown, and white. And we're moving away from what's most important, which is having good intellectual debates, regardless of skin color. You should be able to talk about immigration just as much as I can. We can. We should be debating on, on in terms of what it comes to policy and this stuff, this sort of stuff. But the reality is, I can probably say a lot more about immigration and what I the policies that I would like than even yourself, because the reality is. With my skin color, I, I probably have a, a, I'm allowed a, a bigger vocabulary. That is terrible for democracy, and that is not what Great Britain stands for. So how do we deal with this? So how do we deal with this issue? Because what is becoming abundantly clear to me is that a lot of our big cities are ghettoized. And as a result, there is completely two-tier justice going on. And in fact, it's not just two-tier justice, is it? It's two-tier society. It's, it's two-tier everywhere, two-tier in education. So I, I've been talking a lot about this in terms of the group of people in this country who are performing the worst uh, at, at school level right now is British white boys. And their numeracy rates are declining, their literacy rates are declining. Now, if you're black, white or brown in this country, that is horrible news because the harsh reality is maybe not in London or Birmingham, Manchester, where a lot of these uh, positions of power, where a lot of these decisions are made. 
the vast majority of this country is white, more than 80% of this country is white. So going forward, the workforce is largely going to be white. And obviously, men can't have children. So they won't have the when it comes to workforce, they won't have the time off that a woman with. So in short, white men are going to dominate and do dominate our workforce. So if their education standards are sli sliding, which they are, and they're dropping quite drastically, that is a serious problem for everyone, because that means our productivity as a country is going to decline. And, the, and but we will never have this conversation because, you know, we'll, we'll focus on, you know, whether it's BLM or other issues, despite the fact that the largest portion of our workforce or, or our soon to be workforce are struggling. And I think that is seriously concerning and we instead we'll teach about white privilege we'll talk about things that happened over 100 years ago we'll talk about all this sort of thing damage people's confidence damage these kids confidence have n give them no examples of positive role models male role models in their lives don't look into the fact of how important a family structure is and all this sort of stuff instead we're going to teach them how they are um how privileged they are how they've been the root of all evil the last 100 years and you the children i think is the starting place. I think that's where we should be trying to improve the education. Me personally, I think there should be nothing regard racism out if you're white, black or brown. We should just be trying to improve children in this country. But if we were to specifically talk about a race, then it would be an, and a group of people, white boys. But again, in the education system, this will not be talked about, be frowned about, it'll probably be thrown out. And I think if a white person said what I said just now, I think there would be it'd probably be more damaging for them than for me. But this is backed up by pure stats and data so well yeah i, I, I mean yeah. of course it is because because the white guy goes to jail the black guy doesn't they said exactly the same thing about a footballer so we come back to that example but talking on a macro level i mean i grew up in the generation of a colorblind society we looked to martin luther king we looked to john lennon and no one will tell me that that is wrong. But where you are right is that we have young white kids today who are told from a very young age, you have to think about race all the time. That's all that matters. Now, I actually think what it does is encourage racism. But then you have the cultural issue, Sondland, and you've done some really brilliant work on this as well recently. And the cultural issue, I would say, is even more important. Because when I know when I know for a fact that there are, for example, areas of East London where Sharia law is practiced, where young British-born Muslims are told in mosques that gay people such as myself should be shoved off the top of those buildings, then I'm sorry, multiculturalism has failed. And we have to start talking about it. Instead, what is the Labour government's plan? Well, it's the dystopian, I would say, worst reality that Christopher Hitchens imagined all of those years ago that actually what I've just said to you, Sonal, could quite soon, and I'm not exaggerating, be illegal. It, it's crazy and absurd. And I think you know, the, the, I think the big problem is, and, you know, we, we've got to be even critical of the previous government because I don't think they, they helped in this. Totally. All the, the decisions that are being made, I think, by um, the Labour Party, Conservative, not even just the political party, but even some of their headquarters of these education, some of these institutions, they're all based in and around London. And the harsh reality is London, the problems of London are not the problems of the UK. There is a clear difference. And I think there is a really big divide, not just in this country, by the way, I think it's the same in America, New York, Washington, compared to the rest of the country. And I think they're really deluded in terms of what the problems of an average Londoner has compared to the average person in Devon or up north in Newcastle. They have no concept or almost, it feels like almost like a hatred towards working class people where they don't want to actually understand the, their concerns. They're obsessed about things in their own lives to try and find their new purpose because they think by teaching BLM, by shouting free Palestine, they think they think this gives them purpose and it makes them a good person and all this sort of sort of stuff. Whereas majority of people don't actually care. What they want is to be able to um, get their kids in a educated, get them to a better life than themselves. They should be much more focused on the uh, our economy, growing our economy, sorting out our NHS. All this sort of stuff, but instead we're talking about their problems, the Londoners' problems, because for them NHS isn't an issue because they're probably going to have 
private um, a private healthcare, so they don't really care. The economy doesn't really matter to them too much because even if the tax rates go up, they've still got enough wealth that's not going to have much of an impact to them. They're not remotely interested in talking about the concerns of the working class. Instead, it's a lot easier for them to stay in this bubble. I wouldn't say Westminster, I'd say this London bubble, rather than trying to understand the concerns of the average person. And just we can just brand them far right. We can just say Yes. um, the moment there's any sort of criticism, we'll just brand them as far right as people who have no... Um, understanding of the world, you would have hoped and thought after Brexit that they would have understood that that, that isn't quite the case. People in this country are, are disillusioned with what's going on in, in a lot of these major institutions. Still, they haven't really seems to be learnt from that lesson. Um, and that's why going back to your point earlier, we were talking about the Tory leadership. A lot of it is, mm. to be honest, I, one of the reasons I feel it's a bit irrelevant is I want to see people with deep principles and values. And I think lots of people in this country want the same. They want to see real people with deep principles and values, even if they are flawed as characters, even if they're not the perfect speaker as well as a Cameron or Obama or whatever. I think people are craving for some authenticity in this country. And at the moment, in these positions of power, whether it be in politics, education, they don't seem to exist. No, no, which is why people are quite rightly turning to Nigel Farage politically or if you look outside of the political realm are turning to people like Tommy Robinson. But one of the big issues Sunil, is that if you are in authority, in any position of authority and you tell the truth about these issues and you are genuine about these issues as you discuss, guess what? The establishment comes for you and cuts you down and destroys you, destroys your career and your reputation. And I have the most shocking example of that today. So this is the Met Police Federation chair, a guy called Rick Pryor. Now he gave an honest interview, an honest interview to Charlie Peters of GB News yesterday, where he said that officers are, quote, not engaging with people they should be at times for fear of complaint and suspension. And that is specifically in reference to dealing with ethnic minorities. Because if a white officer, and we've seen this time and again, deals with an ethnic minority, look at politicians like Dawn Butler who have tried to, I would guess, aggravate the situation to make a political point. So, so before I tell you what's happened to Rick Pryor, which will absolutely shock you. Let's have a look at his very honest interview with GB News. A striking crisis of confidence at the moment um, within policing in general, and certainly within the Metropolitan Police, uh, whereby officers are withdrawing from um, any kind of proactive policing um, for fear of falling foul of uh, the IOPC, the Independent Office of Police Conduct, um, or a um, vexatious or malicious complaint. Um, there seems to be an assumption of racism um, right from the off, um, particularly when it's a white police officer and uh, a member um, of the public from a minority ethnic community. And um, it almost seems as if the onus is then on the police officer um, to prove that um, the interaction wasn't uh, racist. And um, we've we found that in the two recent cases that have uh, been um, highly publicised, both in the Croydon bus incident um, incident and uh, and also the Dos Santos and Bianca Williams um, stop and search incident. So that is the Met Police Federation Chair Rick Pryor speaking the truth about the very real experiences of police officers in London. You're not going to believe it. As a result of that interview. Rick Pryor has been suspended by the Police Federation of England and Wales. Charlie Peters, who conducted that interview, said, I'm told that his comments were considered discriminatory and controversial and that they could undermine the Federation's reputation. So, Sonal Sharma, no wonder people are too afraid to speak out. I mean, his example, you know, you said you'd be shocked or um, surprised. That I, to be honest, I'm not. We, we saw this in, with the Rotherham grooming gang scandal. Yeah. It's in writing. They did not make the arrest. They didn't do the proper investigation to not stoke racial tensions. It, it was it's there in plain sight. And so I think it's, it's, it's really worrying because, you know, 
I, I, I obviously I, I'm born here. My my parents uh, weren't, but a lot of people initially came to this country and want to be a part of this country for the freedom of speech, the democratic values, being focused on merit. And what's been amazing about Great Britain and what makes it still an incredible country is in this country, no matter what race you are, no matter what person you are, whoever you are, um, your, your your personal life is, you can go from being near the bottom and you can climb right to the top our social mobility Yes. is incredible it's possible in this country but examples like this when we start to discriminate against uh, people just speaking the truth makes you question about great british values we we're so lucky that we have this in this country the majority of countries don't have it the way we do and it seems like we're you know, on this sort of like suicide mission of just destroying the great values that we have and it's, it's really sad and I, you know, I have so much sympathy for the police in the sense of what do they do? A lot of these people, if they do speak out like he has, they risk ruining their lives. They have Well, families yes. to support, children to support. Do they want to go Yeah. out here and make these public statements and risk all of that? It's, it's a really tough situation and a, and a really unfair one. And aren't we also letting these people win? Sort of, because I'll give you another example that is just broken today. First, though, hot flashes, sleepless nights, weight gain, joint pain. I know a lot of you are dealing with or have dealt with these symptoms, especially the women in the outspoken family. Now, obviously, I haven't experienced menopause firsthand. That would be scientifically impossible. But I have heard from so many of you about the challenges that come with it. So I hope today I'm coming to you with some good news, because by now, many of you will have heard me talk about Verso, my launch sponsor. It is a product that I have personally been taking for months. It's been really transformative. But today, I want to focus on all of you amazing women out there, especially those dealing with menopause or perimenopause, because I know... that this phase in life can be very tough. Well, Cell Being by Verso is designed to target those symptoms head on by addressing the root cause. It's formulated with ingredients that are proven to increase NAD plus levels in the body. That's huge because NAD plus is what keeps your cells healthy and energized, but it drops off as we age and especially during menopause. But here's the thing, boosting NAD plus can make a big difference in how you feel. So women who've taken Selbean are reporting some pretty amazing changes. Hot flashes disappearing, more energy, joint pain relief, weight loss, and mental clarity. And I've heard from some listeners who've told me their periods have come back or have become regulated and they feel like they're turning the clock back on aging. How amazing. So the ingredients in Selbean have shown to balance hormones without going the traditional hormone therapy route. It also helps with inflammation and metabolism, which is especially helpful for managing weight and keeping you feeling your best. Plus, these research-backed ingredients have been shown to improve bone health, which is crucial for postmenopausal women at risk of osteoporosis. What I love about Selby, and I think you will too, is that it doesn't just mask the symptoms of menopause, it tackles the root causing of aging. So if you haven't tried it yet and you're ready to take control of your health and feel more like yourself, click in the description on YouTube or Rumble or head over to buy.ver.so. Use the coupon code OUTSPOKEN at checkout to save 15% on your first order. So if you're tired of the sleepless nights, the hot flashes, or just feeling off, give Selbean a try. It's already helped so many of you, and I'm confident it can help even more of you. I'll repeat the website address, buy.ver.so forward slash OUTSPOKEN. Use the coupon code OUTSPOKEN. But now, back to the show. Suala Braverman. has had to postpone, they say, her Cambridge speech after a Palestine group issued mob rule tactics. So Suella wrote on X, I was due to speak at Cambridge University today. Sadly, the event was cancelled because of militant pro-Palestinian protesters and the security risks they posed to me. Intimidation and thuggery have no place on campus or in our democracy. Now, James Orr responded by saying, also on X, the cancellation of Suella Braverman's lecture at Cambridge by aggressive student activists makes a mockery of the university's commitment to free speech and is yet another reminder of Bridget Phillips, and she's the education secretary, of course, her folly in blocking a law designed to prevent scandals like this one. And, you know, Suella Braverman, very successful woman, you would think someone who people should be proud of, like you, uh, parents from another country, She's, of course, a former student of Cambridge University. Yep, she can't go because of those hard left activists. You know, it's, it's a great, great example because it just shows the the double standards. You know, we, we talk about racism and all this sort of stuff. And I, I think 
when it comes to the hard left, um, you'll see real racism. When a Suella Bravman, uh, that profile of person who is an ethnic minority, doesn't prescribe to the notion of um, being a victim, doesn't prescribe to the notion of needing a quota and all this sort of stuff, I think that's when you see the, the level of real racism emerge. You don't see that in other, other elements of, of Britain and you never really will because most people don't really care about your skin colour. Um, but there is an obsession with the left nowadays, which is all about skin colour. And the problem with Suella, and um, I say problem, it's not, it's their problem that they have with Suella is, as a, as a brown woman with Indian heritage, she should be thinking a certain way. She does not think that way that they are inclined to. And so for them, they cannot tolerate it physically for them because it's like this is, if it's a white person, sure, they can kind of, they'll just say he's racist or she's racist. But when it's a colored person like that, um, then I don't think they actually have the the capacity to tolerate remotely. So they will really see that. No. Oh, and, and, and of course, when Suella was subjected to a clearly racial attack, in terms of the use of the term coconut, uh, that person also went free. Now, I'm a free speech absolutist, so I would argue probably, and this may be very unpopular, that no one should be going to jail for using racist terms. But what I would also say is that the law needs to be applied equally. And I know for a fact that Suella was very, very upset about that racist attack on her. So you are pointing out what is a two-tier society? You're doing brilliant work, and please keep it up. And I really hope you're back on Outspoken to That is Sunil Sharma, who is the founder and chief executive of the Global Conservative Coalition and a, I would say, very important voice in British politics who we'll be hearing much more of in the coming years. Thank you so much, Sunil. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wilson Outspoken. Please click on my face just to the bottom left to subscribe to this brand new independent news source and turn on the notification bell so you'll be alerted to our brand new live shows, uncancelled interviews and special royal episodes. Outspoken is also now available as a podcast so you can listen to the show every weekday on the go wherever you are. You can subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and I've put some of the links in the show notes below this video. Keep watching our outspoken clips to support this independent news venture with no spin, no bias and no censorship, unlike the MSM. Most importantly, I promise to keep fighting for you.